I'm super excited to introduce our panel. So first and foremost, we have Dantley Davis. He is our Chief Design Officer at Twitter. He has shipped many successful consumer products, especially as of late, over his career on social media, streaming services, payments, and video games. Here at Twitter, he leads a team of over 200 people, and I can attest to this personally, builds amazing teams and products that people love. So hi, Dantley, give you a quick wave. Our second panelist is Sean Tai. Sean is the co-founder and executive director of BridgeGood, an award-winning nonprofit that specializes in design for social good. He dedicates himself to enhancing tech literacy and opportunity among emerging black, indigenous, and people of color communities and through student creatives. So welcome, Sean, give him a quick wave. And then we're also joined by Wandi Kabuli and Sean Hoja, both tweets that we all work with and who are part of Dantley's org. Wandi is a design program manager at Twitter, and Sean is a social media manager on the design team here at Twitter. But aside from their incredible accomplishments inside Twitter, I know Wandi and Sean first and foremost because of their commitment and passion to do good in the community. Honestly, it's really interesting when you're in my role, I head Twitter for good. Certain tweets just jump out right away because they immediately want us to help out in the community and they are kind of our leaders in this space. Sean and Wandi are both of those folks and we're very lucky to have them. They've also been volunteering for Bridge Goods since they, very, since they first came to Twitter. So now let's get into our content. What are we gonna to cover today? Twitter is on a journey to become one of the most inclusive and diverse tech companies on the planet. That journey includes all of us who work at Twitter, who use Twitter and the product itself. We're on a mission to bring our company and community together as a force for good. That brings us today, to today, which is Twitter for Good Day our biannual day of service where we have over 6,000 tweets volunteering all over the world and 60 projects. We're gonna go ahead and get started and ask our amazing panelists about how they view diversity and inclusion in the design space. So again, thank you for joining me, Dantley, Sean, Wandi, and Sean. And uh, Sean, Ty with BridgeGood, I'm gonna go ahead and start with you. So can you tell, tell us about BridgeGood and what inspired your decision to create it? Uh, I just wanted to shout out first, everyone at Twitter, I get asked a lot, uh, as someone in the nonprofit space with a lot of folks that don't necessarily like tech they ask me sean what's a what's a tech company that you've actually liked working with and i think it's very easy to say twitter so thank you twitter for being a, a really dope company and uh, having some great employees that i consider friends bridgegood uh, is a nonprofit that started with the goal of tech and design for good it quickly advanced to helping BIPOC students uh, and student creatives enter the tech industry or whatever industry they want. We have this thing called Inspire Oakland that is a design challenge that allows any Northern California participant to add it as a portfolio piece by participating for the chance to get 48 foot billboards, 60 foot LEDs with their artwork on it. And it's all about social good and inspiring the community. The other program we have is called the UX Design Apprenticeship, where we give tuition-free three-month learning experiences to BIPOC students to get into the industry with a UX uh, certification. And again, Twitter's part of that, and a lot of other companies are as well. Google.org, Salesforce, just really excited to be here, and uh, thank you to the BridgeGood team as well. And Danley, thank you too. Sean, thank you so much. Uh, Dantley, I have a question for you. As Twitter's chief design officer, you are a huge advocate for true inclusivity in design and tech. So I, after hearing Sean, I, I know the mission really resonates with you and probably speaks to you personally about your journey as to where you got today. I would just um, be curious if you could give us kind of the Cliff Notes version. How did your journey lead you to Twitter? Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Sean, for joining us today. Um, the reason why I joined Twitter is because of the mission of the company. Um, I wanted to use my design uh, talents and, and skills and experience to help improve uh, technology and in turn try and make um, society better and more reflective of the, the people who are using these platforms. And I, I believe to my core that in order to make that vision uh, true, that the decision makers of the products that we build need to be reflective of the people that are using it. And um, that means that the, uh, the, the team seem to be diverse. And through my own career, um, you know, I found success from having representation of many different groups in the room, uh, whether it be working on the streaming platform or, or I'm thinking about how small business 
instance, um, use you know payment services to you know how we think about spaces and the um, uh, important voices that leverage it to find connection with community. All right, amazing, Dan. We thank you. I do, I do have one quick follow-up question for you. Um, selfishly, because of course I, I love your leadership and love Twitter. I wish every company had a Dan there. But what would you say to other industry leaders about strengthening their inclusion and diversity efforts? Now, this is going to sound really simple, and I, I think it is, but it doesn't happen enough. Um, hire people from underrepresented communities to be part of your core product teams, so that way you actually have decision makers that come from these backgrounds. Um, I think it's not enough to just hire on the periphery, ensure that there's representation um, on the product team itself. And I think the companies who don't have this representation know who they are. And great advice. I, I, I can absolutely feel that at Twitter. I think that uh, statement of our leadership speaks to the whole co company and the folks who are working there. And hopefully reflect the folks who are using the product too. So thank you, Danley. I am going to uh, flip over to Sean Hodrick now, who is part of Danley's team. And um, as mentioned, he, he runs the social media side of it. But uh, Sean, I just remember so clearly, I mean, I think, I don't even know if we met in person, but I do remember you paying me immediately, taking such an interest in Bridgegood. And I'm just curious, tell us how you found out about it. Remind me, tell us what it's been like to work with them for the last year or so. Yeah, so soon after I started at Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter for Good Day 2019 was going on, um, and Ruben Gomez kind of looped me into that, um, and, and, and Miola, and I, I met Sean, and I met the, the students, and they were so great, um, and so then fast forward, uh, I got looped into the Inspire Oakland uh, competition, um, and I... I think I reached out to them to see if I could be a judge uh, because they weren't fully aware of me yet. Um, and so I judged for that. And then from there, it was, it was just a bunch more, a bunch of uh, other things that we uh, worked together on with like uh, the resilience uh, event and uh, Twitter for Good Day last year. I uh, led a project. Um, and then even this week, we did the Inspire Oakland design competition again, where I was a judge. Um, so it's, it's just been great. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And Juan, you could, because you're you're so um, you know so much a part of where what I think the energy Sean has. T tell us what first brought you to Bridgegood. I know you've done quite a bit with them. As I think you're also a judge this week. Tell us what it's done for your career. What those relationships have meant to you. Um, just in general, the experience with Bridgegood. Yeah. Um, you know. I've been a community organizer for 17 years. I literally did that math this week and it inspired me. Um, my mom forced me to sit down and say, how long have you been doing this? And so with Bridgegood, when I started Twitter a year ago, I really sat down and I said, what can I do to make my work meaningful? And, you know, Sean and Yudi and everyone had been so amazing in guiding me and being in involved with the Inspire Oakland and the Resilience Campaign really gave me um, a, a roadmap to help them. And so as I've been watching the young designers of color be inspired by what Sean Hodrick and I and Dantley and you, Carl, and everyone at Twitter can do to guide them, it just it's just so deeply meaningful for me. So that's how I got involved is that I started at Twitter, saw that they had this relationship with Bridge Guide, and I just jumped in. I'm grateful. Awesome, Wandy. Sean, Ty, back to you. If you are a student at Bridgegood, go ahead and flash us an emoji so we know you're out there. But you all just did a project with Tweets about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what, what that's like for your students. What, what did they experience when they see a company like Twitter and get to work with our employees? First, I want to say thank you, Wandy, Sean, and I also want to acknowledge Tommy, who also has participated with Bridgegood, as well as Erica Hong and Gert Lombard, who back in 2013 introduced us to Twitter. Carl, 2013, right? So we've been doing this with Twitter for a while. We just had a great inclusive design class with Audrey, thank you. We talked about accessibility. A few of our students identified as disabled and we're very grateful to learn that this field and design even existed. So really opening eyes, opening ears, making folks feel comfortable, welcome, 
That's kind of the bridge good mentality, spirit and energy. And as we're talking, I think students should be central to this discussion because sometimes in the DNI and what we call the inclusion space, it's the same leaders talking to the same leaders. And it would be great to get students involved with the discussion, as well as those students that don't feel like they have a voice, as well as those students that aren't great communicators yet. If we're really about it, why don't we have safe spaces within these companies, including social workers, shout out to the social workers, that can help these young folks develop their skills within these companies. So I'm happy to start that program at Twitter to get some truly underrepresented folks, not just by their skin color, but by their actual life experiences and where they're at currently. Let's keep it real, y'all. I mean, we got so much talent in the Bay, so much creativity. The Inspire Oakland competition is really um, something that we love. It's been the past 12 years. We featured over 70 artists on billboards. Black Lives Matter to Oakland Pride to this year's Stop Asian Hate. And it's just these raw artists that never had a platform publicly to showcase their artwork. And we had 22 artists this year that entered. And unfortunately, we can't have 22 that win, right? So Wandi, shout out to Wandi, created this last year, the Above and Beyond Awards, where we can honor the voices of folks that may not have their designs to win and display on billboards and benches, but recognize their importance. This is something that I'm doing because I love it. This is something that is legacy. And when I say legacy, I mean as a collective, not individually. To me, that's the spirit. And to be honest, that's the spirit of Twitter for good. Right, Carl? 100% Sean. Yes, my co-spokesperson. I couldn't have said it any better. Yes. Um, I remember at, at your Inspiration Awards, one of the, one of the last in-person uh, events where we were at, oh my God, I mean, it was just incredible. And I remember those students. I remember a woman you know, who she could barely get through her statement because it was so authentic. And um, I, I just, I totally agree. And I, I think that those are the experiences, kind of those lived experiences that give us the um, incredible perspective that we need at Twitter. Prior to COVID, Inspiration Awards 2019, our annual fundraiser, the Twitter team, shout out to London. We actually hosted our fundraiser at Twitter headquarters. And it was a very deep event uh, because number one, Biz Stone came through and he was initially just supposed to talk to me for like five minutes. And he ended up staying for 45 minutes talking to our designers, looking at their UX designs, looking at what they had learned from our apprenticeship. And it meant so much to me, uh, especially with, with my brother, uh, that, that being his last awards. That was his last awards, man. Sean, I, I didn't know that, and I, I just want to say I'm so sorry, and also uh, just what a powerful night, and, and I'm just so glad to have shared it with you, with your brother, with everybody there. I really appreciate that and those thoughts. So, Dantley, I, I kind of want to bring it back to you. Um, you know, as we, as we think about all these experiences in design and lived experiences and your leadership, you, you tweeted recently that you're a forever student of inclusion and diversity. I love that. And I, I, I especially noted you, you said that was because of the stunning colleagues around you who helped make that possible. So, you know, we've did, I, I think you've, you've done an incredible job at Twitter. Where do you see us going? Where do we keep pushing that envelope? Thanks for asking the question. And Sean, I'm really sorry for your loss. Um, I, I, my heart goes out to you. As it pertains to um, that tweet, by hiring folks from all walks of life, I learn and grow from their experiences and you know, it eliminates my own blind spots. Um, we have some really great folks on the team that uh, uh, represent and are advocates for different types of inclusion, whether it be uh, uh, accessibility or uh, uh, awareness of, of mental illness. Um, or simply whether someone is an extrovert or an introvert. Um, all, all that comes into play in terms of how we collaborate. And you know, I think that you know, from, from uh, my perspective of, of being self-taught, then going to, to college um, uh, and being one of the only brown and, and Asian uh, people in the building, and on my teams over the last uh, 20 years, uh, diversity looked 
a certain way. As I'm growing as an individual, I see that you know, diversity inclusion is wide and vast. I think where we go as a as a company is just being more cognizant of that. Uh, I think it's even more increasingly important as we're decentralized and we have new ways of communicating um, that we stop and pause and understand where people are coming from, um, their their style in terms of communication, the the inflections that they might present both in a digital context or in real life. Um, and increasingly as we become more global, there's um, uh, more to understand as it relates to culture and language and the nuance of uh, connection, uh, uh, given those two things. And we're just scratching the surface today in terms of um, that journey that we're on as a company, but I, I believe wholeheartedly that we're on the right trajectory and there's people here who care um, and are empathetic to be on this journey and, and also you know, admit that they're growing and learning along the way. And I think it's a beautiful thing that you know us collectively as, as um, individuals are coming from different places and walks of life and different uh, lived experiences and we're open enough to share that with each other um, and by doing so we're all growing together. I love that so much, Stanley. I, I also thought of you, you had tweeted along those lines recently about, you know, trying to adapt through signs, all that, you know, what are typically more white dominant culture things. And I just think, you know, whether you work at Twitter, whether you interact with Twitter through our community nonprofits, or whether you just use Twitter, this is really our goal here. So I, I know we're just about at time, but for our speakers, you know, I just want to put it back out there. Sean from Bridgegood or Sean or Wandy, you know, Thank you guys, you're amazing. I would love, if you have any thoughts, feel free to share. Danley, of course, you as well. Anyone with closing thoughts? I just want to say thank you. I apologize about the emotion. I, I get really emotional about things I care about. Inclusive design is one of those. We are opening Bridge Good Design Studio in Jack London Square. Carl, I want to thank you for being a, a champion of Bridge Good, but also of the community. Danley, thanks for being a design leader that cares about accessibility and inclusion. Everyone tuning in right now, thank you for hopefully you're standing up with us and, and you believe that design can change the world as well. Uh, thank you from Bridgeman. Every single day that I'm able to inspire others grows me. And every single day that I've been able to work with Bridgegood grows me because young people that are able to hear from others that they deserve better, that they are amazing, that they do amazing work, are going to change the world. I didn't have a lot of that growing up, so for me, it's deeply, profoundly important that we support young people and tell them that their dreams are going to do big things in the world and are going to create an equitable future. So, I'm excited to work with Bridgegood. I just wanted to give uh, one more shout out to Sean. Sean and Yudi both. Uh, for just being crazy hard workers and uh, doing this for the, the Oakland community and the Bay uh, as a whole. Uh, it means a lot to, to be able to give back to, to somewhere I'm from. Carl, Wandy, Sean, Sean, uh, you're, you're doing the people's work. And um, without that support, you know, I, my, my voice wouldn't matter. So I have so much gratitude for the work that you all are doing. And Sean, I want to work more closely with you on the incredible work you're doing at Bridge Good. Uh, so let's uh, show up in each other's DMs and work together. Much love. Thank you. Much love. I want to thank you all. I want to end on a little bit of a humorous note. I'm surprised Sean Ty didn't bring this up. Dan, I noticed you've been tweeting about MC Hammer a lot, which is great. As a 14-year-old growing up in central Pennsylvania, MC Hammer was like my thing. He is a close friend of Sean, and he showed up at the last uh, Inspiration Award. He was the star of the show. So next time we do this, and I hope there is a next time, and I hope we'll have Bridgeman students and other folks involved, we are going to get MC Hammer. That's our pledge. So on that note, um, you guys are the best. What a great panel. So fun to talk to you. Such incredible work. Um, I really thank everyone for listening. Um, please go to Bridgegood, um, the site. Sean will tweet it, share it, and, and you'll know where to find them. They're an incredible mainstay in Oakland and San Francisco and probably have connections to other communities around the world. Thank you.